Hi everyone, I'm Allison Smith. We are so happy to have you here with us from the EnergyCast studios in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Let's take a look at September's top stories. What if nuclear waste could keep the lights on? Oak Ridge just landed a billion dollar project to make that a reality. Find out what it means for jobs and the future of fuel. And a new view on Oak Ridge history. The K-25 Interpretive Center is open to the public. We share how it honors the legacy of those who fought to keep its story alive. Plus, meet the workers who gather all the crucial info to kickstart important cleanup projects in Oak Ridge. A new interpretive center just opened at the former K-25 site that shares history from a different perspective than ever before. Our team was on hand for the grand opening and tells us how it adds a crucial piece to the Oak Ridge story. Energy cast Sierra Hallemans has more. Something old and something new. The Department of Energy, American Museum of Science and Energy, and community leaders recently gathered to celebrate the grand opening of the William J. Wilcox K-25 Interpretive Center. The new facility, named for Oak Ridge's first historian, provides the missing piece for storytelling efforts at the former Manhattan Project site. Now, visitors can get a different vantage point to see and grasp the size of the massive K-25 footprint. So right now, if you come to this site, you can come to the K-25 Atomic History Center. Uh, that tells you the story of the Manhattan Project, the creation of Oak Ridge, and then the second half or two-thirds of it tells you all about the K-25 plant, the, the people who work there, the science behind it. This building tells you specifically about the plant and the immensity of it, uh, what happened there. When East Tennessee workers constructed K-25 in 1943, it was the largest building in the world. Its purpose was equally sized, to enrich uranium for a weapon that would help end World War II. After the war, it generated fuel for the nation's nuclear navy and reactors across the globe. The new interpretive center features two levels of exhibits. The first floor offers space for school groups and events, while the second level overlooks the K-25 building's sprawling 44-acre footprint. The upper floor also includes a detailed scale model of K-25 and a virtual tour that takes visitors back in time to see how the enrichment complex looked decades ago. We're all about education. I would say that's the bottom line. How do we educate and inspire this in future generations? Oak Ridge historian Ray Smith says to understand history, you need to experience it. This facility allows you to experience the science, the magnitude, and then we will have interpretive information that provides details about the K-25 gaseous diffusion plant over the years. And people will begin to understand more than just, what is that code K-25? What does that stand for? Well, they'll be more interested in what did K-25 do and what was its historical significance over its lifetime. This ribbon cutting is special to many in Oak Ridge, not only for creating something new, but also for honoring and preserving what came before. The new interpretive center doesn't just tell the story of K-25. It also honors the man who worked tirelessly to make sure it wouldn't be forgotten. Our team spoke with his son and a lifetime colleague at the ribbon cutting about his vision and what the facility means to those closest to him. Wilcox was one of Oak Ridge's earliest residents and started as a chemist during the Manhattan Project. He served the site for 43 years, ultimately becoming the technical director for all R&D at the K-25 and Y-12 plants. After retirement, Wilcox used his extensive knowledge and incredible drive on sharing and saving Oak Ridge's incredible history. Feeling his pride, what a visionary he was. You know, his combination of his technical expertise and his strategic nature and his love of protecting the history, uh, it all comes together on days like today. I'm in constant touch with the family. And they're just blown away that this has come to reality. They never dreamed it would. He passed away in 13. So to see it today just makes me dream of him and wish he was here to see it. 
Uh, you can visit the William J. Wilcox Jr. K-25 Interpretive Center and the K-25 History Center located right next door from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Monday through Saturday. They're also open from 1 until 5 p.m. on Sundays. Another major investment is coming to Oak Ridge. A nuclear technology company announced plans to build the country's first privately funded nuclear fuel recycling facility. The announcement came at the K-25 Interpretive Center with Governor Bill Lee, congressional leaders, local officials, and Oak Glow executives on hand. And the company says it will invest up to $1.68 billion and create about 800 jobs. The new facility will take used nuclear fuel, recover usable material, and turn it into new fuel for advanced reactors. That means less waste and more efficient energy production. Recycling allows us to get nearly 100% of the energy content out, not just that 5%. We're putting it to work. We're going to turn waste into watts. We're going to help cut costs, not just for what we're doing, but for what others are doing as well. And ultimately, that should translate to more abundant, more affordable power. And that also allows us to build a secure U.S. supply chain around nuclear fuel that has never existed before. The facility will be built at the Heritage Center on land cleared and transferred for industrial reuse by OREM. The facility is the first phase of Oklo's planned advanced fuel center. Oklo's CEO says when you measure the energy stored in used nuclear fuel, the numbers stack up against some of the biggest energy reserves in the world. We're talking about unlocking energy that is an equivalent size to basically global oil reserves. So what I mean by that is when you look at all the used fuel that we have in this country, what recycling, what we'll be doing here will allow us to tap into effectively 1.2 to 1.3 trillion barrels of equivalent uh, of, sorry, barrels of oil equivalent of energy. That's an insane number. That's like global oil reserves, and it'll be here in East Tennessee. The company has submitted its licensing project plan to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. The facility is expected to start operating in the early 2030s. It's a powerful partnership, and it's happening right here in our backyard. Kairos Power, the Tennessee Valley Authority, and Google are teaming up to meet America's growing energy needs. It's a first of its kind agreement between a U.S. utility and a nuclear power company. The TVA will buy up to 50 megawatts of electricity from Kairos Power's upcoming Hermes 2 plant in Oak Ridge. The electricity from the advanced nuclear reactor will power Google data centers in Tennessee and Alabama. Hermes 2 will be Kairos's second test reactor in Tennessee, but the first one to actually produce power. For Kairos, this isn't just a milestone, it's a major step forward. It's the first 50 megawatts of the 500 megawatts total as part of our pl uh, master plant development agreement uh, with Google. Uh, getting that first unit uh, identified, the Hermes 2 plant, that's a really big deal for Kairos. It allows us to leverage both the construction work we're doing here for Hermes 1 and also leverage that for Hermes 2. Hermes 2 is expected to begin operating in 2030. Meanwhile, Kairos Power is also teaming up with BWXT to explore new ways to optimize the commercial production of Triso fuel for Hermes 2 and future advanced reactors. Oak Ridge achieved another big cleanup goal. Crews recently shipped out the last load of transuranic waste for the fiscal year. This month marks the eighth and final shipment of transuranic waste from Oak Ridge to the Waste Isolation Pilot Plan in New Mexico for permanent disposal. The shipments removed 232 drums of waste from storage, a major step toward eliminating all legacy transuranic debris waste from the site. So far, teams have shipped 94% of the lower contaminated waste and 80% higher contaminated waste. A demolition project at Oak Ridge National Laboratory is paving the way for future cleanup and modernization. A crew's recently completed demolition of Building 3003, clearing 10,000 square feet of space to support future teardown of two neighboring facilities. Building 3003 previously supported operations at the graphite reactor when it was operational. The building's location on a heavily congested hilltop made its demolition a tough assignment. As a workaround, crews used the nearby footprint of a recently demolished facility to build a ramp and remove 80 shipments of waste without crowding the worksite. 
Removing Building 3003 eliminates risks near the historic reactor and opens land for future reuse. The team handling the U-233 disposition project has already surpassed a major EM cleanup priority ahead of schedule. The goal for this fiscal year was to process 50 canisters of U-233. Isotech soared past that number, processing 75 canisters. That's 150% of their target. Exceeding that goal is eliminating more waste and boosting the supply of a material that is powering next generation cancer treatments. But success like this doesn't happen without a strong team. Isotech leaders say the real difference is the people. And I think it's the, it's the family atmosphere where everyone is so involved with each other and they take care of each other that they all want to help each other be successful, regardless of the role, regardless of the discipline. Engineers helping millwrights, millwrights helping um, operations technicians, um, RCTs helping out, you know, everywhere that we have radioactive uh, material or any contamination. As since this project began, Isotech has shipped 500,000 pounds of waste for disposal. We want to take a hot minute to share some quick tips for National Preparedness Month. This year's theme is Preparedness Starts at Home. Here are four simple actions you can take to prepare for any disaster. Know your risk. Familiarize yourself with potential emergencies in your area. Create a family emergency plan. Make sure everyone knows what to do in case of an emergency. Build an emergency supply kit. Stock up on food, water, and essential medicines, and don't forget to put together a go bag. Get involved in your community. Consider taking a first aid or CPR course. For more tips on being prepared, visit ready.gov. They battle bugs, snakes, and the Tennessee heat all while laying the groundwork for cleanup efforts in Oak Ridge. We take you behind the scenes with the crews doing the essential but often unseen work of characterization. Before the heavy equipment can roll in, crews have to know what they're dealing with. That's where characterization comes in. It's important work, often done in tough conditions. So far we've encountered snakes, like copperheads, black snakes, water snakes. Um, hornets are a problem, wasps, spiders. There's a lot of ecological <laughs> uh, hazards out here that we really need to keep a sharp eye out for. Despite the challenges, each step in the field builds a clearer picture of what needs to be done. Teams use advanced technology to find and measure contamination. Lots of times we have to come up with innovative ways to collect samples, um, such as uh, collecting samples at the bottom of a, uh, a reactor pool um, or, or, or doing uh, geoprobe technology using deep, uh, direct push technology to collect both delineation and confirmation samples at the same time to reduce the amount of time a, a large dig is going to be open. And that data guides future cleanup. Characterization bridges that gap between we, what we know um, and what we don't know um, to give us the ability to make informed decisions for getting rid of some of this waste and, and buildings and uh, doing some of these soil digs. That knowledge saves time, protects workers, and ensures tax dollars are spent wisely. We do a lot of the assessment, um, understanding you know, what kind of hazards we have, um, helping understand what kind of contaminants of concern are out there, um, how do we deal with those, what levels we have inventory-wise, um, and how do, we, how do we do this properly to where um, we keep the workers safe and healthy. So. For the people doing this work, the mission is deeply rewarding. The, the people I work with, the people I interact with from, from the top to the bottom um, is what makes us special. Um, like I said, the safety culture, the, uh, the quality culture, the ability to work with people and, and strive towards a mission, see that mission come to completion, and then also see the, the fruits of that labor is, is what's special. From the woods to reactor pools, Characterization is the first step in making cleanup and transformation possible. And in East Tennessee, you never know what you might discover while on the job. Characterization crews working on a site just across the street from the Horizon Center Industrial Park made an unexpected discovery. All right, 
You see this? Get ready. A rusty barrel. It was once part of a moonshine still. It does not get more East Tennessee than this. And we would not be surprised if it has a few stories of its own to tell from back in the day. All right, we've got some great stories lined up for you next month. We are turning our focus to several big projects on the horizon for the upcoming fiscal year. From the demolition of massive old buildings to kicking off cleanup efforts on new sites. As stay tuned for these updates and much more. And don't forget to follow us on our social media accounts. We post the show on our YouTube channel. Plus, if you like the topic we covered here, we often have more on it over there. You can also follow EM News on our Facebook, LinkedIn, and X accounts. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. New episodes come out the last Wednesday of the month. You can watch on air or online, same places as always. We'll see you next month from the EnergyCast studio in Oak Ridge.